Hello and welcome to the channel. I'm Don Mecca and today's video is pretty exciting. Why? Because we're dealing with something that's supposed to be more extreme, more extreme than a freaking black hole. Can you picture that? Today's video was recommended to me by a subscriber who commented that I should go check out some videos on this topic. His or her name is Templar103. I'll put your name on the screen. Shout outs to you and thank you for the recommendation. If you're into these type of videos, into fascinating videos about space stuff, astrophysics, space objects, make sure you let me know in the comments. Also hit the like to support me in the algorithm. We're striving for 100 subscribers. Yes, that's the milestone. Let's get to 100 subscribers subscribers on this channel. Okay, so without any further ado, let's get right into the video. Excited, let's go. Neutron stars are one of the most extreme and violent things in the universe. Ooh, okay. Giant atomic nuclei only a few kilometers in diameter. Wow. So neutron stars apparently are only a few kilometers in diameter, right? Which is next to nothing if you think about it in galactic terms, right? And they're supposed to be one of the most extreme things next to black holes. Well, Corcus Arts, you're gonna have to prove that to me. But as massive as stars, and they owe their existence to the death of something majestic. Okay, that looks like a star. Mm, the death of a star, okay. Quarkus Arts. Got a jingle along. Stars exist because of a fragile balance. The mass mm. of millions of billions of trillions of tons of hot plasma are being pulled inwards by gravity and squeeze material together with so much force that nuclei fuse. Mm. This whole process right here is why you exist. <laughs> Without this thing happening, nothing, no chemistry, no interest in chemistry would ever exist. The universe would probably be a very, very boring uh, place because this is the process that creates all the heavier elements that exist in the world that we need. Hydrogen fuses into helium. This releases energy, which pushes against gravity and tries to escape. As long as this balance exists, stars are pretty stable. Eventually, the hydrogen will be exhausted. Medium stars like our sun go through a giant. Even the sun has its day that it sets and never shines again. Well, okay, it'll have billions of years to do that. But there's a day where, you know, it doesn't shine the same any longer. Phase where they burn helium into carbon and oxygen before. Ooh, did you see the earth just get eaten up by the red giant sun? Oh my God. Do you think humans would be long gone from Earth at that point? Will there even be direct line relatives from humans that existed now to that point? I wonder what they would look like at that time. What would humanity look like? Would they still be human? Or would we evolve to uh, adjust to this? Because we're talking about billions of years into the future. <laughs> Will humanity self-destruct and destroy all life way before that on this planet? Or would we be multi-planetary <laughs> space bombers? <laughs> Just shooting out to the stars in all directions and, you know, colonizing the Milky Way. Is that what's going to happen by that time? Billions of years in the future? It's very interesting to think and imagine the possibilities. You know, they might not look anything like us. Heck, they might be half robotic. Maybe the whole planet might be just run by AIs and no human life left. Who knows? Or they eventually turn into white dwarfs. Mm. But in stars many times the mass of our sun, things get interesting when the helium is exhausted. Wow. I don't think, I don't know if this is the scale. I don't think it is, but yeah, that, that gives you the idea. For a moment, the balance of pressure and radiation tips and gravity wins, squeezing the star tighter than before. Mm. The core burns hotter and faster, while the outer layers of the star swell by hundreds of times, fusing heavier and heavier elements. 
stem. Carbon burns to neon in centuries, neon to oxygen in a year, oxygen okay. to silicon in months, and silicon to iron in a day. Dang. Do you see how it just it just speeds up? The process just keeps cascading faster and faster. Oh. And then, death. Iron is nuclear ash. It has no energy to give and cannot be fused. Iron is nuclear ash. Did you know that? <laughs> My cast iron is so amazing at <laughs> making steaks. <laughs> and I think it's supposed to add a little flavor to it. So we're, we're, we're eating nuclear dust. Okay. The fusion suddenly stops and the balance ends. Without the outward pressure from fusion, the core is crushed by the enormous weight of the star above it. Mm. What happens now is awesome and scary. Magical. Particles like electrons and protons really don't want to be near each other. But the pressure of the collapsing mm. star is so great that electrons and protons fuse into neutrons, which then get squeezed together as tightly as in atomic nuclei. Wow. An iron ball the size of the Earth is squeezed into a ball of pure nuclear matter the size of a city. <laughs> what the f <laughs> Yo, the universe is so trippy. So trippy. But not just the core, the whole star implodes, gravity pulling the outer layers in at 25% the speed of light. Jeez. This implosion bounces off the iron core, producing a shock wave that explodes outwards and catapults the rest of the star into space. That's where all the goodies come out, you know, all the gold, platinum, iron, um, and what else? What else? All the different heavy, heavier elements just, just come out. This is what we call a supernova explosion, and it will outshine entire galaxies. Mm. What remains of the star is now a neutron star. Its mass is around a million times the mass of the Earth, but compressed to an object about 25 kilometers wide. Jeez, what the... F oh, my Lord. Have mercy. Oh, my goodness. 25 kilometers over a, the mass of a million... The mass of a million Earths in this space. Talk about cramped. God. Dizzle. Right. It's so dense that the mass of all living humans would fit into one cubic centimeter of new. <laughs> Yo, Coker's arts. Oh, my Lord. You, you do know how to freaking make things. You make it easier to picture some ridiculousness. Neutron star matter. That's roughly a billion tons in a space the size of a sugar cube. <laughs> space of a... Oh, my Lord. Yo, what the fuck? Put another way, that's Mount Everest in a cup of coffee. From the outside, a neutron wow. star is unbelievably extreme. Its gravity is the strongest outside black holes, and if it were any denser, it would become one. So, basically... These bad boys are just teetering on the edge. They, they haven't crossed the line to become black holes, but they're just right there at the border. Mm. Light is bent around it, meaning you can see the front and parts of the back. Their surfaces reach a million degrees Celsius compared Ooh. to a measly 6,000 degrees for our sun. Hot. Okay, let's look inside hot, hot, a neutron hot. star. Although these giant atomic nuclei are stars, in many ways they're also like planets with solid crusts over a liquid core. What? The crust is extremely hard. The outermost layers are made of iron left over from the supernova, squeezed together in a crystal lattice with a sea of electrons flowing through them. Going deeper, mm. gravity squeezes nuclei closer together. We find fewer and fewer protons as most merge to neutrons until we reach the base of the crust. Here, nuclei are squeezed together so hard that they start to touch. Protons and neutrons Spaghetti rearrange, face. making long cylinders Spaghetti or face. sheets, enormous nuclei with millions of protons and neutrons Lasagna shaped like spaghetti. Face. Who decided these names? <laughs> they must have been hungry, hungry, hungry. Well, they came up with these names. It's all food related. And lasagna, which physicists call nuclear pasta. 
Nuclear, nuclear pasta is so dense that it may be the strongest material in the universe. Basically unbreakable. Wow. Imagine we get our hands on something like this, but I wonder, would it stay stable if a piece of it broke off somewhere, somehow? Love but it's so strong, how would you even shape it? Lumps of pasta inside a neutron star can even make mountains, at most a few centimeters high, but many times as massive as the Himalayas. Wow. Eventually, beneath the pasta, we reach the core. We're not really sure what the properties of matter are when they're squeezed this hard. Protons and neutrons might dissolve into an ocean of quarks, a so-called quark gluon plasma. Mm, maybe this is how the initial universe was when it was just right after the Big Bang. Just hot plasma. Some of those quarks might turn into strange quarks, making a sort of strange matter with... <laughs> Dark matter, strange matter. I wonder what the properties of strange matter might be. What, what, what could you do with strange matter? Properties so extreme that we made a whole video about it. Oh, I guess I have to watch that one. Or maybe they just stay protons and neutrons. No one knows for sure, and that's why we do science. That's all pretty heavy stuff, literally. So let's go back out into space. When neutron stars first collapse. Mm, Sailor Moon. They begin to spin very, very fast, like a ballerina pulling her arms in. Neutron stars mm. are celestial ballerinas spinning many times per second. Many times per second. Head rush. This creates pulses because their magnetic field creates a beam of radio waves which passes every time they spin. These radio pulsars are the best known type of neutron star. About 2,000 are known of in the Milky Way. Wow. These magnetic fields are the strongest in the universe, a quadrillion times stronger than Earth's after they're born. A quadrillion, quadrillion. <laughs> they're called magnetars until they calm down a little. Magnetars, ooh. Don't you like get ripped apart into pieces because of this magnetic field, just approaching it? But the absolute best kind of neutron stars are friends with other neutron stars. But Why are they the best? By radiating away energy as gravitational waves, ripples in space-time, their orbits can decay and they can crash into and kill each other in a kilonova explosion that's... <laughs> kilonova. Supernova. Kilonova. Oh. Wow. I don't know what to say about this one. I wonder, is it is it stronger another an explosion than a supernova? Spews out a lot of their guts. When they do, the conditions become so extreme that for a moment, heavy. Mm, is that the opportunity? If when a kilonova by two neutrinos, could they get that material? It wouldn't be under the same pressure, so would it instantly decay into something else? The nuclei are made again. It's not fusion putting nuclei together this time, but heavy neutron-rich matter falling apart and reassembling. Ah, there we go. Only very recently, we've learned that this is probably the origin of most of the heavy elements in the universe, like mm. gold, uranium and platinum, and dozens more. So then our two neutron stars collapse and go. become a black hole, dying yet again. That's two deaths. Not only do stars have to die to create elements, they have to die twice. Over millions of years, these atoms will mix back into the galaxy, but some of them end up in a cloud which gravity pulls together. Solar nebulae. And that's how a solar system becomes. To form stars and planets, repeating the cycle. Mm. Our solar system is one example, and the remains of those neutron stars that came before us are all around us. You are the stuff of neutron stars. Did you know that? Our entire technological modern world was built out of the elements neutron stars made in eons past, mm. sending these atoms on a 13 billion year journey to come together and make us and our world. And that... Mm. These majestic stars had to die for us to exist. Ain't that crazy? That's pretty cool. Is it? That's rough. Until then... We okay, so that was the end of this video neutron stars yeah they're pretty goddamn extreme i think i read somewhere where yeah the, you, you approach something like this and you actually just get ripped apart by the magnetic field is that true 
let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, want to see other videos like this for me to react to them, make sure you leave a comment. Let me know. Also, make sure you subscribe. Let's get to 100 subscribers. Let's do it. We could do it. And I appreciate you. Thank you for watching. Catch you in the next video.